This is why I love copyright law. It, it enables so much. I know that it's also a burden, but it also enables so much creation, so much creativity, so much art and music and, and movies and TV shows and just content that we can enjoy that makes it fun to be a human being on Spaceship Earth. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Hello everyone, I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and today I have an update in the Twitchuation, the Twitch DMCA situation. You may remember we did a video about Twitch sending out thousands of DMCA notices to people, giving them only a couple days to take down content that had accumulated for years, and because of Twitch's live streaming nature, people had live streams that were hours and hours long so what were you going to do try to take down just part of a long live stream do people really keep archives of their live streams and then can go and edit every single one of them re-export and re-upload every single one of these live streams no so what ended up happening was a lot of people had simply three days to turn around and obey the dmca notice or face termination from Twitch because this is what's required by copyright law. I thought today we would go over this post by Twitch and this longer post by Twitch and I would react to it from a legal perspective being that I am a copyright attorney and deal with copyright law every day. So without further ado, let's see what Twitch has to say in the summary post. This is a series of Twitter posts that I summarized using the Threadreader app. And it says, your frustration and confusion with recent music-related copyright issues is completely justified. Things can and should be better for creators than they have been recently. The next few tweets will outline our plan for being better partners to creators. Great start. They're going to do something better. Okay. We were as surprised by the number of music-related DMCA takedowns as you were. Before May, we received fewer than 50 per year. So that's... That's pretty revealing. 50 DMCA takedowns per year? Now we're receiving thousands each week. This led to the warning email some of you received in October. Three days was simply not enough time for most creators to sort through all their VODs and clips. We should have developed more sophisticated and user-friendly tools long ago. To all the creators who lost their community's best moments, we're sorry. This shouldn't have happened. Okay, sounds like a sincere apology so far to me. We'll get to the copyright law in a moment. Our full blog post includes far more details, but there are two main things you can do to avoid music-related DMCA takedowns. One, don't play recorded music during streams. And two, delete VODs and clips that may have recorded music in them if you're unsure about the rights. In addition to building and improving tools, we need to provide creators with more education. On November 18th, we'll host the first of four copyright-focused Creative Camp live sessions. Follow them at the link that they provided. We know you still have many questions that weren't covered in this thread. We've put together a common question FAQ for further information. You can find that here, and we'll go over that in a moment. Copyright law and DMCA are not small or simple topics. Understatement of the year. We highly encourage you to refer to our latest blog for a more in-depth explanation of our path forward. So let's now turn to their music-related copyright claims and Twitch blog post, which is a little bit longer. Creators, we hear you. Your frustration and confusion with recent music-related copyright issues is completely justified. Things can and should be better for creators than they have been recently, and this post outlines our next steps to get there. Moving forward, we'll be more transparent with what's happening and what tools and resources we're building to help. Copyright law and the DMCA are not small or simple topics, so this won't be a brief post. We'll do our best to keep the legalese to a minimum, though there's bound to be technical terms here and there. First off, a quick review of what the DMCA actually is. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act is a set of U.S. laws that allows you to create and share content on digital service providers like Twitch. Uh, sort of. I mean, it has that effect, but that's not the law. The law is that Twitch gets immunity if they obey DMCA takedown notices, or at least that's the relevant part. 
We comply with the DMCA and similar laws worldwide. They have the choice to comply, but they must comply if they don't want to be liable for your copyright infringement. Part of complying means that when a copyright holder thinks a streamer has used their content without permission, we have a process in place for them to be able to request that content be taken down, or else Twitch is liable for the copyright infringement. When we receive a DMCA notification, we process the notification in accordance with our DMCA guidelines. This includes removing the content, sharing the details with the channel owner, and tracking the allegation. Some of that is compliance with the law, and some of that is their internal policy or procedure for dealing with the DMCAs, like what they do for the channel owner. The minimum is that they have to take the content down. They don't actually have to notify you as far as I... So yeah, the notice and takedown part of the DMCA does not require them to notify the content creator. It just simply means they have to expeditiously remove or disable access to the claimed material. DMCA takedown notifications can affect your ability to stream because we, as part of our efforts to comply with the DMCA and similar laws, issue and track copyright strikes and ban the accounts of those who repeatedly infringe the copyrights of others. This part's also true. It's part of the law. There has to be a termination policy and Twitch has to implement the termination policy. We saw this with some of the ISPs who didn't implement a termination policy and I think it was Charter or Cox was ended ended up being on the hook for a billion dollars in copyright infringement. I think they settled that for less, but it was a billion dollar judgment. I think it was $10,000 per a thousand infringements or something like that, or, or 10,000 infringements. I can't do math. This policy is important because we respect the rights of all creators, including those who create and record music, as well as the rights of those who own and control copyrights. As a company that is built around a community of people who create content, we take allegations of copyright infringement seriously because they have to. There are high statutory damage penalties, like I just said, $10,000 per copy for willful infringement when the DMCA is not obeyed by the, the content host. Recent DMCA notifications. How did we get to this moment? Until May of this year, streamers received fewer than 50 music-related DMCA notifications each year. I'm assuming that's 50 in total. That's a really low number. That means that the music industry was not targeting Twitch in any way until May of this year. Beginning in May, however, representatives for the major record label started sending thousands of DMCA notifications each week that targeted creators' archives, mostly for snippets of tracks in years-old clips. So they let it go for a while, and then the RIAA and the industry just decided to start sending infringement notices. So they must have prepared some kind of blitz of infringement notices and then just started sending them. We continue to receive large batches of notifications. We don't expect that to slow down. So Twitch is now caught in the middle. There was widespread and ongoing infringement of a sort, and the RIAA just started doing this. The, the Twitch was unprepared. Twitch had to respond. This means two things. If you play recorded music on your stream, you need to stop doing that. And two, if you haven't already, you should review your historical VODs and clips that may have music in them and delete any archives that might. In other words, there's very little that you could do to like mute or edit those sections. If Twitch hasn't caught it already, then what are you going to do? There's no editing tools like on YouTube, which even those editing tools are questionable. There's no editing tools that you have to mute or edit sections of your videos. Plus, you would have to go and find every single one of those, and how do you know which music is infringing and which music is not actionable or is not going to be acted upon? You don't, so you just have to delete. And I think Twitch did some of that for the content creators, which also pissed them off. Also, if you play recorded music, you need to have a license to do that. So Epidemic Sound is one, but Epidemic Sound doesn't have like the top 40 or the top 200. That's something you have to license through the recording industry, through BMI, through Harry Fox, through ASCAP, and those are going to be very expensive licenses if you 
aren't a major creator. Even if you are a major creator, it's going to be a very expensive license. And if you aren't a major creator, they might not give you a license at all, or at least it's going to be very expensive. We were as surprised by this sudden avalanche of notifications as many of you were. We also realized that we needed to provide streamers with more educational programs and content management tools to help you deal with this unprecedented number of notifications coming in all at once. So while we continued to remove content targeted by these notifications as required by the DMCA, we understood VODs and clips from years ago may not necessarily reflect your current approach to music. Therefore, we also paused the processing of strikes associated with these batched notifications in order to give you the tools, information, and time that you would need to deal with them. This is a really good thing from Twitch. They have the right and maybe even a legal duty to terminate your account after so many strikes, and they have to apply this policy or they become liable for the copyright infringement, potentially. So they don't want to be potentially liable, but they also recognize that they're caught in the middle, and so they're going to bat for the content creators. If this hits everybody all at once, well, they're not going to terminate everybody's channels because they all got a bunch of notices. So they've paused the processing of account terminations and strikes just so that they don't have to terminate everybody. I'm assuming that this got worked out with the recording industry, I'm hoping that it's not something that they're just doing and hoping they don't get sued because they could get sued by the RIAA or uh, other music representatives. So this is Twitch going to bat for you. We have analyzed the notifications we received during that period from the end of May through the middle of October. What we found is that more than 99% of the notifications were for tracks that streamers were playing in the background of their stream. And I get it, it's a lot more fun to watch a stream that has good music. The people who made that good music want to be paid for it though. So either pay for it or... Here's my idea. What the recording industry should really do is have some kind of blanket license. Maybe, maybe it's based on the number of views your stream gets or something like that. And Normally, the way these licenses work is you make an agreement with them, you then play the music, you then report how many people were available to hear the music, you know, a hundred people on your stream, a thousand people on your stream, a million people on your stream, and then you pay the license fee based on how many people joined your stream. If the recording industry would simply set that up, I bet you they'd have a golden goose, a cash cow, and it could be a major balancing of the rights of, well, maybe not rights, but the desires of content creators balanced against the rights of the content owners. The point of the DMCA is to strike a balance between the interests of rights holders, the major record labels in this case, and creators. What did I just say? Because of this, we were compelled to delete the VODs and clips that were identified in the notifications. This showed our commitment to upholding our obligations under the DMCA while affording us the opportunity to sort out the best way to handle issuing strikes in these circumstances. Under these extraordinary circumstances, we recognized creators should have a reasonable chance to understand that content created in the past was being targeted as allegedly infringing and be given an opportunity to change their approach to music before they got hit with strikes. Great. This led to the current situation, which is understandably frustrating and worrying for many of you. Given the circumstances, the warning email many of you received didn't include all the information that you typically get in a DMCA notification. Normally, when we receive a DMCA notification against your channel, we send you an email that includes information about the allegedly infringed work, who the claimant is, how the claimant can be contacted, and possible penalties under our repeat infringer policy so that you can make an informed decision about whether to submit a counter notification or seek a retraction. We hear your feedback about how frustratingly little information we provided, and we should have made that warning email a lot more informative and helpful. Yes, yes they should have. The reason why they should be passing the contact information on is so that you can contact the claimant, ask them to retract their claim, and maybe make a deal so that the alleged infringement doesn't become a bigger issue. 
Over the last several months, we have done our best to manage this situation on behalf of both rights holders and creators. One of the mistakes we made was not building adequate tools to allow creators to manage their own VOD and clip libraries. You're rightly upset that the only option we provided was a mass deletion tool for clips, and that we only gave you three days notice to use this tool. We could have developed more sophisticated, user-friendly tools a while ago. That we didn't is on us and we could have provided creators with a longer time period to address their VOD and clip libraries, that was a miss as well. We're truly sorry for these mistakes, and we'll do better." That sounds like a sincere apology to me, and I, I take that I take that for what it is. I, I think that, that they did mess up, and now they're acknowledging it, and they're telling you what they're going to do better. I mean, what, what more could you really ask for in an apology? They didn't have to apologize. They have the power here. They could have simply kept going without apologizing. And I think their apology is sincere. But hey, that's just my opinion. That's not a, that's not a legal fact. How to avoid DMCA notifications. One important question we've heard from you is, how can I stream safely and confidently on Twitch without having to worry about getting DMCA notifications from music use? Most importantly, don't play recorded music in your stream, unless you own all the rights in the music or you have permission of the necessary rights holders. How do you know all of this? Well, you'll have to have worked that out ahead of time. It's not a super easy thing to do. Doing this is the best protection for your streams going forward. If you're unsure whether you own all the rights, it's pretty likely you don't. If you want to include recorded music in your stream, use a fully licensed alternative like Soundtrack by Twitch, or other rights cleared music libraries such as Soundstripe, Monster Cat Gold, Chill Hop, Epidemic Sound, and NCS. Hey, I just got a whole bunch of new libraries that I didn't know about, so let's check those out sometime. While we haven't received more than a handful of DMCA notifications targeting in-game music, if you're playing games with recorded music in them, we recommend you review their end-user license agreements, that wall of text at the beginning of a game, to see how the terms cover streaming with that music. One way to do this is to search for a game's official EULA online and do a Control f or Command F search for words like stream, licensed, and music to point you toward the correct sections. This is a really good suggestion. This is exactly what I do. When I want to stream something and I'm not sure if there's a streaming policy, I go search for streaming policy, you know, in the name of the game, or the developer streaming policy, or so search for those things. Search for the EULA, then search for stream, licensed, or music in the EULA is Twitch's suggestion. This is a top suggestion. This is a really, really good suggestion, and I think it really shows how sincere they are. If you're unsure about the rights, some games allow you to turn off music when streaming. Yes, check the audio section of your settings or options in the game, and sometimes there's a checkbox for sound streaming, and that will turn off any unlicensed music, or, or rather any licensed music that is only licensed for the game and not for the live streams of the game. If neither of these apply, consider turning off VODs and clips. Uh, okay, if neither of those apply, consider turning off the sound. You can't just stream the music in the game or music in the background and just turn off VODs and clips. The stream itself is still a public performance or public display of a copyrighted work, so... Even if your gameplay is somehow a fair use, and I'm gonna have an update video on that tomorrow, even if your gameplay is somehow a fair use, the music might not be. So don't just resort to live streaming. I think that's actually a pretty bad suggestion. Just because you're live streaming without VODs and clips doesn't necessarily mean that you couldn't get a copyright claim or DMCA takedown notice or strike or termination of your channel. It does mean that it's harder for the music industry because I doubt that the RIAA or other industry representatives are watching your live stream and then reporting the music. But that's how it happens in real life. A bar or other venue, real life venue, that has music playing in the background has to have a license for that. And the way they get caught is there are, what do we call them, secret shoppers? 
there are people who play the role of secret shopper. They are literally hired by music industry representatives to go to random bars. They just hang out in a bar, have a few drinks, listen to the music that's being played. They write it down, and then they go and check to see if that bar or venue owner reported the playing of that music under their license and paid the appropriate fee. And if they didn't, they get sued for copyright infringement. One of the music venues near me, Croc Rock, which wasn't uh, the greatest venue in the world, but uh, they got hit with this several times, and, and uh, I think I almost did a video. I might have even done a video on it. I'm not sure. It was a very long time ago. They're not there anymore. That's possibly because they got sued into oblivion, possibly because they are, were just weren't the greatest music venue, and, um, and possibly because there was some mismanagement. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But there are real-life ways that the RIAA and other representatives could find your live stream and, and still do this very same thing. So that's a, that's a mixed suggestion for me. I give that a thumbs down for, uh, for Twitch making the suggestion to simply turn off VODs and clips. For your stream archives, right now, your only options, if you think they contain unauthorized music, is to either go through them one by one, or for clips, use the delete all tool that we've provided. So delete all clips, or delete your VODs one by one. We understand both of these options have downsides, and we're working to provide you with more and better options as soon as possible. These things will take time to get right, and new challenges may appear in the future regardless, or irregardless, we're committing here and now to investing in building better tools and keeping you posted with our progress. New products and tools. Ever since the influx of DMCA notifications began, we have been working on building new and improved existing tools to help creators, such as the Clips Mass Deletion tool. This work is still happening. Many of these changes won't be visible, but we're focused on three areas where we heard that you need more support from us. First, you don't have enough control over the recorded content on your channel. We have made improvements to enable you to mass delete clips, but in addition, we will 1. expand the use of technology to detect copyrighted audio, and 2. give you more granular ways to manage your archives instead of just a delete all button. Second, we'll make it easier for you to control what audio from your live streams will show up in your recorded content. Soundtrack by Twitch has some of this technology built into it, and we'll work to make it available for everyone regardless of whether you want to use Soundtrack, for which we've cleared all necessary rights, or music from others that provide rights cleared music. Third, we need to give you the ability to actually review your allegedly infringing content when you receive a notification, in addition to the details already provided in our takedown notifications. That is, information about what copyrighted work was allegedly infringed, who the claimant is, and how the claimant can be contacted. We also need to help you more easily file counter notifications if you believe you have the rights to use the content. For example, because you've secured a license, believe it is a fair use, the claimant does not control the rights, or you believe you have the right to use the music without permission. This is important. Let's go over counter notifications real quick. They are listed here in 17 U.S.C. 512, subsection G. You go down here to replacement of removed or disabled material and limitation on other liability, and then here subsection 3 is the contents of a counter notification. You do these things and Twitch should put your content back up, and the legal dispute should now just be between you and the content rights holder, the claimant who sent the DMCA notification in the first place. That's not a guarantee, because we've seen from YouTube that they don't always obey counter notifications because they have the right to control what they put on their platform, so sometimes they just don't want to put it back up unless they have some kind of reassurance that they are not going to get in trouble themselves. Plus, I speculate that in the balance of power between the music industry and any one content creator, I'm pretty sure it's the music industry that wins in YouTube's eyes. Some of you asked why we don't have a license covering any and all uses of recorded music. We are actively speaking with major record labels about potential approaches to additional licenses that would be appropriate for the Twitch service. That said, the current constructs for licenses that the record labels have with other services, which typically take a cut of revenue from creators for pay to record labels, make less sense for Twitch. The vast majority of our creators don't have recorded music as part of their streams, and the revenue implications to creators of such a deal are substantial. We're open-minded to new structures that could work for Twitch's unique service, but we must be clear that they may have to take some time to materialize, or may never happen at all. 
In the meantime, we're focused on building tools to better help you manage VODs and clips, providing licensed music options like soundtrack while we explore all options. So the potential here is that maybe Twitch will work something out with music industry representatives. Here's how it might work. Twitch and the music industry might have the tools to find this music, which they're already using to identify which tracks need to be DMCA'd in the first place. So if they use those tools instead to identify which music needs to be paid for, maybe Twitch can take that out of your revenue, or maybe Twitch can have an option where you pay a license fee and then you can use all the music that you want from a certain library. Um, DJs are already familiar with this. They have to pay for a, a, a book of music or a catalog of music that they're allowed to play from. And so they'll often pay a few hundred to a few thousand dollars a year to have the right to play music out of the book, out of the catalog. Uh, maybe Twitch can do something like that. Maybe it can be identified in real time and they can pay something like a streaming fee. But I don't know if the music industry wants the tiny amount of revenue that streaming music gets. Maybe they want a higher cut because this is something called synchronization. The music is played along with video. And so that's usually a much more expensive license than just streaming on Spotify or YouTube music. And just so there's no confusion, to music creators, we pay public performance licenses in order for you to perform music live to your communities. You should also avoid using pre-recorded music and disable VODs and clips unless you have the rights to the music and the compositions. Okay, that, that answers my question from before. Remember I gave it a thumbs down where they wanted you to just delete VODs and clips? It seems like they pay for public performance licenses in order for you to perform music live to your communities. So you should avoid using pre-recorded music. Okay, so that actually doesn't address my thumbs down from before. I still give that a thumbs down. Apparently, if you perform the music, um, I'm, they're not talking about the legal definition of public performance. They're talking about the, 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 the colloquial definition of literally playing the guitar or playing the piano or playing your instrument or singing or something. That license is apparently paid for by Twitch. Although I don't know any of those details because they've literally provided two sentences on it here. You should avoid using pre-recorded music and disable VODs and clips unless you have the right to the music and the composition. So that's sort of like a, playing a cover song. And there is a compulsory right to play a cover song, but there isn't necessarily a compulsory right to play a cover song and stream it online. That's a new one. That one's not exactly covered by copyright law in the sense that you have a compulsory right. And the compulsory right means you still have to pay a licensing fee. So... That doesn't really solve that problem, but at least there's a way it's being handled for now. That's more of a practicality and less of a legality there. Ways to stay educated. We've got some work to do. At the same time, we urge you to keep learning about copyrights. Please keep learning about copyrights. I love teaching people about copyrights. Subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, and you'll learn a lot about copyright. We try to bring you interesting things, not just dry and boring things. They are important not only because of the issues we've covered in this post, but because they are created every single day by songwriters, recording artists, authors, and other creators like you. You can take helpful steps to manage your existing content. You run the risk of getting a DMCA takedown notice whenever you use somebody else's copyrights in your channel without permission. This is why I love copyright law. It, it enables so much. I know that it's also a burden, but it also enables so much creation, so much creativity, so much art and music and, and movies and TV shows and just content that we can enjoy that makes it fun to be a human being on Spaceship Earth. In order to help with continuing education around this subject, we've added in a copyright and your channel creator camp page and hosted a follow-up live stream where we answered community questions live. So check those out. I will uh, open them up here. We'll look at them in a second.
Moving forward, our goal is to continue to provide more insight and resources to our community. Starting November 18th, we'll host the first of four additional Creator Camp live sessions. Topics will include DMCA overview, musicians on Twitch and DMCA, and copying and managing your Twitch content. These sessions will go deep with insights both from internal and third-party experts, and we hope they'll be useful for you. Be sure to follow Creator Camp to ensure you receive notifications when sessions are live. We will plan additional sessions as needed, informed by the response to those sessions, etc. Transparency going forward, we know there are probably still many questions that we didn't get to here. We've started to compile some we've received from the community and have drafted an FAQ. We always appreciate additional feedback, so we've created a forum a user voice forum around this topic as well. Finally, please remember to check your security settings to confirm your email is up to date so that you get notifications. We'll send reminders. We're looking forward to continuing the conversation. Okay, so that's already pretty long. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop there, but just a couple things. They do have a link to copyrights and your channel, how copyright law impacts your streams and all that. And what we'll do is look at this in maybe a follow-up video. There is a Creator Camp channel. There is a Creator Camp sign up. There is a DMCA and copyright FAQs link that was in that post. There is a DMCA guidelines section that was in that post. And here again is how you can send a DMCA counter notification. Please keep in mind, a counter notification should not be just sent in all cases. You need to evaluate your situation and determine whether you have the rights for the content or not. If you don't have the rights for the content or you aren't making a fair use, or you have reason to believe that, that, that the content is not public domain or something, in other words, if you don't have the right, then sending a counter notification could run you afoul of the law, could get you a copyright lawsuit against you, and those are big deals. I deal with copyright lawsuits literally every day. So I'm going to stop there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll try to answer everybody's questions, and I'll do a follow-up video after we know a little bit more about Twitch's further response. Love you all. Thanks for watching. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news program here on YouTube, also on Floatplane, and we do our production shows on Twitch. Thank you to our monthly supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench, on sponsus.com slash law, and on Floatplane and our YouTube members. At the $50 level, thank you to Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Citizen of the Sovereign, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Andy, Benjamin Hightoff, Goliath Cleric, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Rudolph Besherer Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Jay Dixon, Hot Grills in Your Area, Brandon Abel, Torpedon, Cassandra, Sandra Curran, Mayor of Titty City, Shadow Tycho, RDH Dragon, Earthbound Star, and no copyright violation intended. And thank you to our $5 plus supporters scrolling on the screen in front of me. You are all on that LED panel behind me. I love you all. I will see you in the videos that drop. Have a great week. Bye.